Hey, Bo, why have so many people been buying dogs during COVID lockdowns? So it's a, it's a, it's a really good question, and it's a very poignant one, actually. Um, as I just finished a run again, and I'm sitting out on the balcony looking out over Bristol on a beautiful day, uh, drinking my, um, my morning drink. Um, and the reason why it's very poignant is because this weekend, uh, which was my birthday, um, my gremlins came over and we were um, reflecting on the fact um, and coping and dealing with the fact that our, our their dog of 12 years um, died just before the weekend and her name was Pepper and she was a brilliant dog. She was a cross between a Labrador and a Springador, uh, a Spring Spaniel, so she was a Springador. And so why have been people been um, buying dogs um, during COVID and especially lockdown? And the answer is that it's really, really deep, right? They enabled us, dogs enabled us to um, evolve, literally. So just a quick story about this. So Homo sapiens came, um, came out of Africa, uh, where we all come from, uh, about 300,000 years ago. And about 40,000 years ago, we settled into the continent that we now, the landmass we now call the European continent. And so this was what's called the Upper Paleolithic age or the stone age and what was life like in on this landmass in Europe at that time well it was really rough um, life expectancy is thought that um, around that time was 30 years or less right uh, I would have been dead long time ago um, child mortality rate in fact uh, it's been calculated only for, uh, 400 BC was over 50% in many places of the world. So imagine what it would have been like 40,000 years ago. And also remember that we were not the only human-like species then. There were four of us that were all competing, including Neanderthals. So um, it was not only incredibly difficult, it was also a remarkable time, like so many times of challenge, a time of innovation and invention, including art, was really coming into its form with cave paintings and ivory carvings. And the stones actually shifted from just being a few categories to being very specific to a task. But what was one of our greatest innovations? It was the dog. So the dog, of course, didn't just exist. It evolved and it was created in some sense through our intervention. The dog evolved from the European grey wolf and the domestication of wolves, many scientists think, is what enabled us to survive. It enabled us to outcompete the other human-like um, uh, species like Neanderthals who went extinct around 17,000 years ago. So how did this happen? Well, it probably happened because we most likely captured a, pup, a set of pups somehow from, from a wolf and started training them. There happened to be one or two of those wolves or litter that desired a slightly more extended interact, social interaction with humans. And from that moment, we would then, like in so many other traits, would have exaggerated that particular trait. And it, from that moment, their evolution and our evolution were entwined. It's most likely we would not exist if it weren't for the dog. Which means that their brain and our brain is actually quite synchronized in the sense that they can not only feel guilt, they can even recognize the emotions that we might feel from our facial expressions and we can theirs. Um, they can empathize and so they can feel our pain and we can feel theirs and this is not an accident. This is what enables that bond between us and them. Um, and what's more, they have three, at least three, essential qualities that humans need, especially in times of strife. And I can hear a little doggy barking over there. Um, they are inherently hopeful, they're optimistic, and they're deeply loyal. And they need to give and receive touch. These are so essential to our sense of wellness, especially in times of challenge. Um, and I've been thinking about sort of optimism, eternal optimism and hopefulness. I remember Pepper, uh, she would 
always go after birds. You know, we'd take her to the sea and she would go after the seagulls. She never would catch one, never would catch one. Um, but uh, that never stopped her from trying. And it wasn't just that she didn't give up. Um, it was because she just so thoroughly enjoyed the process of the chase, which we so often forget, that the process can be it's re the reward for doing the thing itself, not what's achieved, but the process of getting there. And we know from neuroscience that emotions and ways of being are contagious. We tend to be like the things and people that are around us. So they can infect us with this way of being, um, just like we can affect other people. And what's more, they can also give us something to care for, which is one of the most powerful means for any of us to overcome our own anxieties, to not just be cared for, but to care for something or someone else, which we so often forget. Um, so with that said, just a thought. Um, what if, what if um, we could not only get dogs like the little guy down there, barking away. What if we not only we could get dogs and, and be contagious by them, but what if we could act like dogs for other people? In a sense, to become a dog for another person, to become that domestic dog for another person, to contage another person with hope and optimism through our actions, not just our words, but through our actions of not giving up, through our loyalty, through our love, and through our care uh, for them. So, just a thought.